Hello and welcome. Today, well, I've got some good news and I've got some bad news, I'm afraid. The good news is that uh, Tarek Mitchell managed to get his full, full debut uh, in an England shirt against the Ivory Coast, which was fantastic. It's great to see his progression. The bad news is we may have a couple of injuries as a result of the international fixtures for Palace players, but I'll get onto that in a moment. First of all, I just want to talk about Tarek Mitchell. As I said, he had his first full England debut, played 60 minutes again in the friendly against the Ivory Coast, and I thought he played really well. I mean, he didn't have a whole lot to do. The Ivory Coast weren't really giving us much of a problem. They were, well, they spent the first 30 minutes, I think, kicking lumps out of Raheem Sterling. But um, they, they kind of just meandered through the game. They didn't give us too much to worry about. I don't think any of the back four had uh, a huge problem. Tyke Mitchell dealt with what he had to deal with very well. He tracked back. He went forward, tried to make the overlaps, and um, I thought he had a really good game. As I said, he had played 60 minutes, and then he was uh, then he was subbed for, I think it was Ben Foster, I think he got subbed for in the end. But no, he was great. He had a great time. The only thing, my only niggling thing with it, and it wasn't to do with Tarek at all, it was to do with how they used him. Um, I don't know if this was just me that was looking at this or saw this or whether other people did as well. Please let me know if you also noticed this or this concerned you in any way. But I noticed, especially in the second half, he wasn't really used as much as, as an offensive way. Uh, you know, he's, if a palace, he goes forward. He puts, he's been putting in some great offensive work this season. He's, his crossing has been fantastic. Uh, and he's been really working hard getting down the getting down the wings. And he was trying to do that for England. But what I noticed was he wasn't being given the ball when he was going forward. Very, well, he wasn't given the ball very much at all when he was going forward. Um, especially when um, Jack Graylish had the ball. He seemed to be either passing it into the midfield or taking it on himself. Didn't seem to be take, you know, passing it wide to Tarek Mitchell to put a cross in. Now whether that's just what um gareth southgate has told him to do or whether it was just he wasn't being played in i don't know but it, it was a bit of a shame because his offensive work has really been doing well this season i think he could have been putting in some really deadly crosses but that's my only as my only niggle about the game i think he himself played very well and i don't think he's done himself any harm whatsoever around the around the 80th minute i think the last 10 15 minutes of the game um conor gallagher came on did very well, did what Conor Gallagher does. He ran around the pitch, he made himself available to passes, got involved in the play, did great. I think he had a great 10, 15 minutes on the pitch. And uh, again, I don't think he's going to done his um, his uh, future England career any harm at all. And uh, especially in the second half, when um, Ivory Coast were down to 10 men, it was, it was a walk in the park for us. I don't think they even got out of second gear, to be fair. But it was great to see Cap Mitchell on his debut and uh, fantastic to see it. However, there was some some stories going around, particularly uh, yesterday, with result to uh, to uh, Wilfred Zaha. He didn't play in the game against the Ivory Coast yesterday, and it was told apparently by the Ivory Coast manager that he'd picked up some kind of hamstring injury. Now he said it was level two, which uh, isn't the worst it could be, but it means that he could be out for a few weeks maybe eight weeks something like that he had a scan he's already had treatment by the palace doctors so we're going to have to just wait and see how that pans out but it could mean that he misses the fa cup semi-final against chelsea which would be a big blow for us um i also heard rumors and um I, you know please let me know in the comments if this has been substantiated that uh, michael elise also picked up an injury when he played for the under 23s uh french and under 23s uh, it originally looked like he had some kind of foot injury, but then it kind of morphed into an Achilles heel, Achilles tendon injury. So I'm not quite sure what the actual details of that are. But again, if it is an injury and it is a long term injury, then that you may also miss the FA Cup semi final, which will be two massive blows considering that we also aren't going to have Conor Gallagher because he's going to be uh, unable to play against Chelsea, which is his club. So three top first team players possibly out of the squad for the FA Cup game is going to be a big blow but it does give us opportunities to bring in other players who as of yet haven't had much of a haven't had much of a time on the pitch we have got replacements I think who can do very well for us so uh, I'm not overly concerned but it would have been great to have had uh, a full squad to choose from and to uh, you know mix and match during the game I'm going to be doing another video on 
on that situation on who I think could possibly come in in place of those players. It was just going to originally because it's going to be about um, Conor Gallagher, but now of course we've got two other possible injury worries that could mean three other three players out instead of just the one. But um, I'm going to be doing a video on that and uh, letting you know who I think could possibly come in and uh, and take the place of uh, Zaha Gallagher and at least say if they are all going to be out. Um, in that video, of course, I would love to hear your feedback on who you think maybe should come in instead. If you agree with me or if you think other players should come in, that video is going to be coming out in a couple of days. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel. That really does help subscribers because it lifts the channel up. It gives, us, um, gives me a great boost in terms of the YouTube algorithm and also being uh, found on uh, podcast networks and things like that. So... Do subscribe, like, rate and review, whatever you can will be a very big help to me indeed. That's what I've got so far. I hope that you've enjoyed the episode and uh, let's hope for the best with those two players, whether they can get themselves uh, fit. I know Zaha's a, a fast healer, but we'll have to wait and see. Fingers crossed. Thanks very much for joining me. See you next time.